Namaskar and welcome to Sunset Television. I am Vishal Dahiya and you're watching our special show Perspective where we bring you a detailed analysis of all key national and international issues. Today we're going to talk about uh, the master plan for infrastructure development in India and that is through PM Gati Shakti. Now, infrastructure creation in India had suffered for decades from multiple issues such as lack of coordination between different departments. Now this not only caused great inconvenience but also led to wasteful expenditure. Last few years have seen unprecedented focus on infrastructure projects. Now a national master plan for multimodal connectivity, that is PM Gati Shakti, has been launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address the key issues of infrastructure development through institutionalizing holistic planning for stakeholders for major infrastructure projects. Now, instead of planning and designing separately in silos, the projects will now be designed and executed with a common vision. Now, the master plan will incorporate the infrastructure schemes of various ministries and state governments. It will also leverage technology extensively, including special planning tools with ISRO imagery. This move will enable all ministries and departments to visualize, review and monitor the progress of core sectoral projects through the GIS platform. It will also provide the public and business community information regarding upcoming connectivity projects other business hubs, industrial areas and surrounding environment as well. We are joined by three distinguished panelists today to try and understand more about uh, this uh, particular uh, master plan. And let me first introduce them to you. Beginning with, we have with me uh, Sudhendu Jyoti Sinha here in other studios. He's advisor infrastructure connectivity with Niti Ayoga. We're also joined by two more uh, experts. Mr. A.K. Bhattacharya, the editorial director of Business Standard, is also joining us. We have... Uh, Dr. V.A. Nageshwaran with us uh, is part-time member of Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. Welcome, all of you gentlemen, to Sunset TV. Let me begin with you, Mr. Sena, and let's first start by understanding the scope of infrastructure projects in India. Where do we stand? What are we doing right now? What are the bottlenecks? Uh, what are the key hurdles uh, which we're trying to tackle? Thank you, Vishal. Uh, infrastructure is something that is key to a nation's prosperity where good and the great nations are so, because they have got that inherent strength of the infrastructure. Now, in India, let me tell you, for the first time, the present dispensation, they have identified the infrastructure, number one, they have put them, consolidated them, and then given a thrust to them. So, national infrastructure pipeline with infrastructure components, as many as 22 of them, out of which 17 are economic infrastructure, and five of them are social infrastructure. All of them have been combined together. Mm -hmm. And the government thrust is to allocate more, to give a very, very focused approach and see to it that we are able to achieve them. You mentioned about the problems in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. the, some of the most fundamental problem is delays in time and cost overruns, leading to time and cost overruns. That is a fundamental challenge to infrastructure. Second challenge is with regard to once you have set up an infrastructure, its maintainability has to be there. It must be maintained at the same level at which that infrastructure was conceived, set up de novo. And finally, it must be a de resilient infrastructure. So in the event of any problem, any, any kind of letdown, mm -hmm. it must bounce back to its original position, to its original status as fast as possible. So these are the primary problems. And of course, one more problem is, you know, let me tell you that uh, there is a system of review of critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. That is, that Prime Honorable Prime Minister does it, does it personally. And that is done on a monthly basis. Through the Pragati uh, platform. Exactly, mm -hmm. through the Pragati platform. You rightly identified it. And there he could see that there are definite reasons that are causing, that are leading to delays in and leading to time and cost overruns. And one of the reasons that he could identify was, and rightly so, that the systems are working in silos. And to break down that silos, the concept of Gati Shakti is there. Okay. So that okay. is the kind of origin. Okay, that, that uh, pretty much, you know, sets the stage uh, for us to understand how Gati Shakti will work or what are the areas where Gati Shakti will uh, take care of uh, the issues or the hurdles, the problems you mentioned, Mrs. Sena. Let me bring in the other two panelists here as well. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Nageshwan, and let's... Uh, Start by, uh, you know, taking uh, this thread forward, which Mr. Sina has uh, put in place in terms of understanding what is it that uh, 
we need to tackle. We first need to identify the problems. Looks like the major problems are that uh, most of the departments work in silos and there are cost overruns. And then, uh, now, you know, it's not just about the profitability of the infrastructure project, but maintainability of the infrastructure project is very crucial. Absolutely. I think uh, he has touched upon all the relevant dimensions of this initiative. Obviously, the very idea of trying to break down silos between ministries and departments is key to implementation because all of us mention that execution is critical. And that is like, you know, that's a motherhood and apple pie kind of statement. Execution is critical to any initiative at all levels of the government. So, uh, so at one level, this Gati Shakti initiative, which coordinates across ministries and departments, is a very welcome initiative. What needs to happen at the next step for us to ensure that the chances of success become much higher uh -huh. is to make sure that at the implementation level with the state governments and the local governments also, there is coordination and there is sort of a mutual accommodation and understanding. Uh, so that, that is the next step that needs to happen. So what we have seen so far is the bridging of one important execution gap, which is coordination across ministries. But the next step that needs to happen is coordination with state governments and even up to the local government level. Okay, okay. Mr. Bhattacharya, uh, your views there on, uh, you know, the Gati Shakti master plan when we're talking about uh, the key aspects. Uh, it is said that uh, there are six key elements of this master plan and those elements will deal with all the issues which are being highlighted by Mr. Sinha and Dr. Nageshwaran here. Well, I, I think uh, both Mr. Sinha and Mr. Nageshwaran have touched the right buttons, in my view. Uh, Mr. Sinha talked about the maintainability aspect, which is a big challenge. Uh, we know from the Gati Shakti uh, package that it will uh, try to break the silos that exist uh, within the different central ministries that undertake these projects. And Mr. Nageshwaran has taken the pitch forward by saying that it is important to get the states on board because, after all, the projects will not be executed in vacuum, but these projects will be executed on the ground and the local level. Even the local governments need to be involved in it so that it is actually a reflection of the government's uh, belief in cooperative federalism where the states, the local governments, mm -hmm. and the center come together. But the, the third element in my view, which is very important, is the maintainability of these projects because by creating the projects, we are, cre we are meeting an infrastructure gap or an infrastructure deficit. But if you do not ensure that uh, the framework for maintaining them also exists, then I think we'll be failing in our, uh, the, you know, in achieving the targets that underlie those, those projects. Okay. For example, if we are uh, looking at uh, uh, setting up uh, 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 new renewable projects, it is important that the policy framework underlying in what way the renewable power projects need to evacuate its power, their power for distribution to the consumers, that need to be fixed. So therefore, Projects is the first stage. I think the Gati Shakti addresses this issue about creating the hardware very well, but if I may use somebody else's expression, it needs to go beyond by developing an equally robust software, the policy framework by which these projects become maintainable, okay. to quote Mr. Sinha. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that part as well and how technology is also being used. But first, uh, coming to that aspect, which both, uh, you know, Mr. Bhattacharya and Dr. Nageshwan is pointing out, Mr. Sinha, and that is uh, the involvement of uh, other tiers of government, state governments, local, local bodies, because uh, when we're talking about implementation of projects, these projects are implemented in various parts of the country and uh, the involvement of uh, the uh, state departments, uh, uh, the departments of the state government and the urban local bodies, they are... Uh, and Gram Panchayats also becomes really crucial. So everybody will have to be on the same footing. Yes, I fully agree to that. And that is the reason why in this Gati Shakti, this is something that is embedded into it. The, the six pillars that you mentioned, two of them are analytical, and one is, one, is, uh, one is analysis, and second is dynamic. So the entire data set, the entire information, keeps on updating on a kind of real-time basis. Mm -hmm. And the most, most I would say, call it essential part, most striking part of this particular Gati Shakti thing is, 
that it is, it is very, very transparent. So not only the departments, the people, regardless of the level of the department, even their different layers, different governments, the people at large, the investors, everybody would come to know that what exactly is happening in a particular area, in a particular stream of infrastructure. And then, for example, an investor, he should be able to know that whether he should be going in for investment or not. For a state government, they should be understanding whether how they could contribute in the monitoring part and if they have to add on to an infrastructure, what precisely they should be going in for that. So what I'm trying to say is that this sort of transparency is innate, it is inbuilt mm -hmm. in that entire paradigm of Gati Shakti. Okay, and, and, and uh, what about the technology part? Because uh, use of spatial technology, Mr. Sena, that seems to be uh, bringing that extra element which is required to ensure that uh, not only the transparency is maintained, but those silos are broken, uh, which is the uh, you know, basic main aim of such a plan. Precisely. So that as far as technology is concerned, it is the most upskill technology that has, been that has been brought into it. So it is kind of satellite imagery based, geospatial, you have already mentioned about it. So these are the kind of new technology paradigms that have been embedded, that have been placed into it, so that cross-sectoral information can flow in and the decisions are taken on across the board. I mean, it is not a kind of, say, a, a particular silo is taking decision. What is happening is today is that suppose from point A to B, you decide, a, a particular ministry decides that we will go in for roads. Mm -hmm. They do not know what exactly other projects are going on, what precisely is their timelines, when will they be completed. Now with this Gati Shakti in position, it will be absolutely transparent, transparent. You will come to know of it that this is precisely is going to take place and accordingly you can say, you can uh, adjust and accommodate your own plans. Okay, okay. Dr. Dr. Nageshwan, you know, how do you think uh, the technology part would add more value to this initiative? Because uh, we're not only talking about planning and design, we're also talking about uh, keeping it transparent, letting people know, letting the departments obviously know that uh, what uh, the uh, uh, other uh, uh, department is working on, but uh, the general public, uh, the business uh, investors, them also, for them to be aware as to what's happening in an area. No, I think uh, Mr. Badacharya talked about the software of implementation and immediately right on cue, uh, Mr. Sinha ex explained the uh, information transparency of this entire Gati Shakti initiative. The very fact that a higher profile is being given and silos are breaking down, it's important. And what Mr. Sinha explained have brought us, you know, visions of in the earlier days, somebody would have laid a new tar road and then within a week, the telecom department would come and dig it up and then they will close it. And mm -hmm. then the electricity cable guy will come and dig it up and then the water uh, mains will come and... So they will keep digging the same road from three to four times, uh, undermining the entire initial laying of the road. Now, what he explained tells you that at a, at a given time, before you commence work, you will know what is going on. That transparency basically bridges the information asymmetry. And clearly technology today is available that if you can present it in one single dashboard before a new initiative happens, then obviously uh, that is going to make the chances of success go up and exit and timely implementation will also improve. But once again, coming back to the software aspects of it, clearly a lot of thought has gone into it mm -hmm. in terms of the information dashboard and coordination, etc. Ultimately, what is also important is when it comes to dispute resolution, interpretation of rules has to be consistent across ministries, across projects, across states. Uh -huh. And so that is where the next step will come to. We will come to in terms of software, of, the software of success is all about consistency of interpretation, implementation, etc. Okay. Okay. Mr. Bhattacharya, you know, we have discussed this quite a number of times and all of us are aware of... Uh, this uh, important fact as well that infrastructure is very key to our economy's further development. A lot of money is being spent on it, a uh, lot of projects, uh, and they, they, they not only have monetary value, they have a uh, lot of social value as well. Those infrastructure projects do add a uh, lot of uh, value to the living standards uh, in both urban areas and rural areas also. The question I'm asking here is that uh, initiatives like PM Kati Shakti, how do you think... Uh, they will add value in the given uh, you know, time frame we have 
and uh, sort of, you know, race against the time that we have to ensure that the infrastructure projects are completed in time? Well, the very fact that, uh, you know, an initiative of this nature uh, has been unveiled at the level of the Prime Minister uh, shows the, the kind of importance that this entire project uh, should, uh, will, uh, in the normal course, acquire. Uh, that is, uh, that will instill a lot of confidence uh, in, in, in the various stakeholders in the system. Uh, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, that uh, the key would be, uh, one, the implementation, uh, two, its maintainability, and three, uh, what kind of uh, policy framework you want to create these new assets. Mm -hmm. Now, there is there are various uh, uh, you know, models that are available. There are public-private partnership models available. There are also private ownership models that are available. Now, it is very important uh, to make sure that the Gati Shakti uh, project does not remain a preserve of only the, the public sector projects, but it should be actually a preserve of any enterprise that wants to operate in this country so that there is competition and competition yields its natural benefits in terms of better price discoveries and better services and the customer ultimately benefits. So I think we have to first acknowledge that Gati Shakti, uh, you know, pitches this entire idea of infrastructure projects to a new level, and that is to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, unequivocally welcome. Uh, but the the fruits of this initiative should flow down uh, to each stakeholder in the system, and that is very important if we want to achieve the goals that are set out by the Prime Minister in this initiative. Okay, okay. Dr. Nageshwan, you, uh, you know, earlier in your first response, you spoke about how uh, we have to look at the next level as well, involvement of uh, state governments and, uh, you know, other tiers of government also. But from your, uh, you know, point of view, if we have to understand what more needs to be done, initiatives like sure. PM Gati Shakti are very crucial, very important, and they do take care of, uh, you know, uh, uh, take a holistic view of all the problems which are there with the uh, implementation of infrastructure projects. Uh, but as Mr. Bhattacharya is pointing out, uh, uh, we will have to take a few more steps here on it. Sure. No, I think Mr. Bhattacharya touched upon an important point which I wanted to make earlier, but I'm glad that he made it, which is that by having it launched by the Prime Minister, it does send a signal already to the outside world about the importance being given to it. So it raises the profile of the entire initiative. That is one, which is important, which is a very first step towards uh, ensuring its implementation and success. And then he also touched upon the importance of the involvement of the private sector while I talked about the state and local governments. Obviously, the next thing is to tie up funding for each of these initiatives, which is the most important um, requirement for success. And that is where a clarity of thinking on who gets to bear the risk when you involve private sector or public-private partnership and in what manner, whether it's it through revenue sharing or whether it is through upfront investment. So uh, who bears the upstream risk and who bears the downstream risk? Mm -hmm. And who gets to bear the losses when things go, in case things go wrong or delayed? All these things are good to be thought through and clarity arrived at before implementation begins because if we deal with them in an ad hoc manner, then what will happen is there won't be a consistency across different projects and that, that will lead to litigation and further delays, etc. So the next step is not only to determine funding, but also to ensure risk allocation, risk bearing between upstream and downstream initiatives. And the third thing is to have these frameworks in place before execution commences. Okay, okay. Uh, that uh, explains a lot of uh, things which need to be done. But uh, taking it from there, Mr. Sena, you know, would you agree with both uh, Mr. Bhattacharya and uh, Dr. Nageshwan here that in terms of taking those, uh, few, you know, few more steps uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, initiatives like PM Gati Shakti are implemented properly on the ground also involves, uh, uh, you know, the private sector, the other stakeholders as well. They will have to be given that much due weightage uh, in the entire uh, scope of framework there. Yes, that is there. In fact, let me tell you that the Gati Shakti is basically for them also. Mm -hmm. It is not that it is for the, ex it is to the, to the kind of, to 
the to the government to the exclusion of them no the the big idea is that how to take the population of india the general citizens of india into a very very aspirational stage of ease of living and ease of doing business mm -hmm. so therefore what i am trying to tell you is that yes as far as sharing of information is concerned i believe that is something inbuilt into it and they will definitely will have a role to play in taking this gati shakti forward okay. with up scale of technology already there it will definitely be a grand grand success and the very fact that it is coming from none other than than the highest our prime minister of india and that too after a lot of experience that he has gathered over a period of time in the evaluation and monitoring of the projects so he knows it all the well how to take it forward and we are there to kind of uh, uh, take it forward yes okay okay so so in terms of uh, you know uh, and and a quick concluding uh, uh, round of uh, comments from all three of you let me start with you dr nageshwan when we are looking at uh, the present scope when we are looking at these policy in initiatives uh, and when we are looking at the need for a, you know a hard push to the infra projects uh, how do you see things moving ahead from here onwards uh, in the short term and in the long term as well so i am i'm confident that given the state of the world and india's uh, uh, resilience and its the impressive bounce back from the second wave etc and also the purposeful reforms that have been unleashed in the last few months starting from the retrospective uh, taxation amendments and then the telecom sector package and now the privatization of air india there are visible results and therefore there will be greater enthusiasm on the part of the private sector to participate and uh, between the three of us we have I, agreed on the fact that the pm has launched it giving it a profile it takes care of coordination it takes care of information asymmetry also so there are several improvements already mm -hmm. so i would give it a very high chance of success uh, given the building blocks are in place and i also feel given the global financing conditions if okay. there is transparency and consistency uh, funding will also become available more easily than before back okay. to you okay mr bhattacharya your concluding comments on uh, you know the way forward uh, when we are looking at the infrastructure connectivity project specifically with the, the, you know these uh, these policy tweaks in place well i think uh, you know we should not underestimate the importance of the monetizability of this project because while we are looking for resources and funding we should all remember that all these projects are actually extremely monetizable and a, a, a package should be put in place so that these projects can be monetized and less dependence on the central exchequer resources are, are are resorted to so that the government resources can be used uh, far more Uh, effectively and far more usefully in other social welfare schemes okay okay there it is thank you so much uh, mr bhattacharya dr nageshwaran as well as uh, mr sena for sharing your views and insight with our viewers as our experts were pointing out uh, the pm gati shakti initiative that is the master plan for giving a push to multi modal infrastructure connectivity projects uh, obviously will have a lot of impact on how the projects are designed and implemented both uh, but there are Uh, you know a lot of uh, efforts which will have to be put in by all stakeholders including the state governments and other tiers local tiers of government as well we'll come back again with a different topic till then keep watching sunset television thank you